Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about thiamine. This is also known as vitamin B1. It is also known as anurine, or the anti-beriberi factor. Let's first talk about some of the dietary sources of vitamin B1. Foods rich in thiamine are whole grain foods, meat, fish, poultry, and eggs, milk and milk products, vegetables, including green and leafy green vegetables, legumes, nuts, and seeds. Fats and highly refined sugars do not contain thiamine. Thiamine is not synthesized in our body, and the recommended dietary allowances, or RDAs, of thiamine are 1 to 2 milligrams per day. Next, we'll talk about the absorption and transport of thiamine. Thiamine is absorbed in the jejunum either by passive process, when the concentration of thiamine is high, or by active process, when the concentration of thiamine is low. Up to 5 milligrams of thiamine is absorbed through the small intestine. The small intestine is where thiamine is phosphorylated, to its biologically active form, thiamine pyrophosphate, or TPP. Only up to 30 milligrams of thiamine can be stored in tissues, mostly in the skeletal muscles in particular. It is also found in other organs, like the brain, heart, liver, and kidneys. The half-life of thiamine is 9 to 18 days, and it is excreted by the kidney. Next, we'll talk about the coenzyme functions of thiamine as TPP. TPP is required as a coenzyme for the enzymes involved in energy metabolism and nerve and muscle function. TPP-dependent reactions are aldehyde transfers. TPP participates in two important reactions. The first is oxidative decarboxylation reactions. These are the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex the alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex and the branched chain alpha ketoacid dehydrogenase complex the second reaction is the transketolase reaction it is in the pentose phosphate pathway and this pathway generates ribose sugars and supplies NADPH and ribose 5-phosphate. In particular, pyruvate goes to acetyl coenzyme A through pyruvate dehydrogenase and alpha ketoglutarate goes to succinyl coenzyme A via alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. Decreased acetyl-coenzyme A will decrease the TCA cycle and hence results in defective energy metabolism. Acetyl-coenzyme A is necessary for the synthesis of acetylcholine as well as the synthesis of lipids including myelin. This explains the importance of thiamine in the function of the nervous system. The causes for thiamine deficiency are as follows. The first is a lack of thiamine intake. This might happen in a variety of different ways. These ways include the consumption of food containing a high level of thiaminases, including milled rice, raw freshwater fish, raw shellfish, and ferns. Food high in antithiamine factor, such as tea, coffee, and betel nuts, processed food with a content high in sulfite which destroys thiamine, alcoholism where chronic alcoholics have low thiamine due to their inadequate diet intake, impaired intestinal uptake of thiamine, and storage of thiamine in the body, accelerated destruction of thiamine pyrophosphate, and varying degrees of energy expenditure. A lack of thiamine intake can also be seen in a starvation state, the absence of dietary availability of thiamine, and increased consumption 
of available thiamine by cells leads to deficiencies of thiamine. It can also be present from gastric bypass surgery due to restricted dietary intake. And a final lack of thiamine intake may come from parental nutrition without adequate thiamine supplementation. Another cause of thiamine deficiency are increased consumption states. For example, diets high in carbohydrate or saturated fat intake, pregnancy, hyperthyroidism, lactation, fever led on by severe infection or sepsis, increased physical exercise, or refeeding syndrome, where carbohydrate metabolism is increased. A third cause for thiamine deficiency may come from increased depletion, such as diarrhea, diuretic therapies, peritoneal dialysis, hemodialysis, or continuous renal replacement therapy, and hyperemesis gravidarum. And a fourth and final cause that we will discuss here is decreased absorption. This may include chronic intestinal disease, alcoholism, malnutrition, gastric bypass surgery, malabsorption syndrome, such as celiacs and tropical sprue, and folate deficiency, which decreases the regeneration of thiamine pyrophosphate. Now that we've covered some of the causes, we can ask ourselves, well, how does this deficiency manifest? Let's talk about that now. Deficiency of thiamine leads to a disease called beriberi. Within weeks of thiamine deficiency, patients develop resting tachycardia, weakness, and decreased deep tendon reflexes. Additionally, some people develop a peripheral neuropathy. Depending on the nature of the diet and the physical activity of a person, beriberi can be classified into two different types, wet beriberi and dry beriberi. Let's first discuss wet beriberi. This type of beriberi is commonly seen in people who are physically active, i.e. those who do strenuous physical activity, and consume excess carbohydrates in their diet. Wet beriberi is the term used for thiamine deficiency with predominant cardiovascular system involvement. Thiamine deficiency causes peripheral vasodilation, leading to a high cardiac output state. The high cardiac output state leads to salt and water retention, renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system in the kidneys, resulting in fluid overloads, leading to an edema of the dependent extremities. High workload on the cardiac tissue for increased cardiac output results in tachycardia, edema, high arterial and venous pressures, myocardial injury, or overuse injury, and chest pain. High output cardiac failure should prompt investigation of thiamine deficiency as a cause. Acute fulminant cardiovascular beriberi, or Shoshin beriberi, is the more rapid form of wet beriberi due to injury to the heart and rapid deterioration of the heart muscle. Patients show cyanosis of the hands and feet, tachycardia, distended neck veins, restlessness, and anxiety. However, edema may not be present. That was wet beriberi. Now let's talk about dry beriberi. Thiamine deficiency with nervous system involvement is termed as dry beriberi. This presentation usually occurs in people with poor caloric intake and relative physical inactivity. Patients show signs of peripheral neuropathy characterized by symmetrical impairment of sensory, motor, and reflex functions of the extremities, especially in the distal lower limbs due to degeneration of the myelin in the muscular sheaths without inflammation. Neurologic symptoms of thiamine deficiency are bilateral and symmetrical impairment of sensory, including paranesthesia and burning pain, motor, and reflex functions of the extremities, especially in the distal lower limbs. 
poor memory, irritability, sleep disturbance, muscle cramps, decreased vibratory position sensation, absent knee and ankle jerk, muscle atrophy, and foot drop in the late stages. Especially alcoholics manifests with vernica encephalopathy, characterized by horizontal nystagmus, ophthalmoplegia, palsies of the eye movement, fever, ataxia, and progressive mental impairment. They also manifest with Korsakov psychosis, characterized by loss of memory, both anterograde and retrograde amnesia, and confabulatory and now we'll talk about the diagnosis of a thiamine deficiency. To diagnose a deficiency of thiamine, we can measure blood thiamine, pyruvate, lactate, alpha-ketoglutarate, and glyoxylate levels. We can also do what's called a thiamine loading test. The thiamine loading test is the best indicator of a thiamine deficiency. Erythrocyte transketolase activity is measured before and after thiamine loading. An increase of more than 15% in enzyme activity is a definitive marker of the deficiency. However, this test is expensive and time-consuming. It is performed only for criterion standard proof of deficiency. The treatment of a thiamine deficiency is as follows. 50 milligrams of thiamine intramuscularly until all symptoms have disappeared, and the maintenance dose is recommended at 2.5 to 5 mg per day orally unless a malabsorption syndrome is suspected. We'll conclude this discussion with two thiamine antagonists. Pyrothiamine, as it is a potent antagonist to thiamine, and oxythiamine, and 2-N-butylthiamine. These are milder antagonists. This concludes our discussion on vitamin B1, thiamine.